Um, well, I don't know whether we'll talk about it from the other uh, the other reviews, but the leading with the elbow, I'm not quite sure what the rule is, but. Um, no, I don't think it's you thought you'd get a ban for up. that, surely. Yeah, I don't think it's hugely come up actually, but um, it did. It seemed it seemed borderline reckless. It was that prominent, weren't he? He promoted it into the player. It, it, maybe he wasn't trying to hit him in the head with it, but he didn't miss his head. <laughs> I mean, I know you're allowed to t- turn your body to sort of shoulder charge while you've got the ball in hand because it's up to the defending player. Where he tackles you, you can, yeah. if he chooses to tack you up high, then then. But an extended elbow into was it Miley's face? Yeah, it was Miley. Um, yeah. You know, there's no way he could have got out got out of the way of it. Um, I wonder I'm, if that's I'm what turned his voice so husky that hit. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe. Um, I mean, I'm surprised there were no action taken unless unless all three all four officials missed it. Yeah, they might not have been looking for something like that from him because he's an innocuous young kid who hasn't really got any reputation or what. I don't know. I don't know. Um, AK Steel 69 said, Hull built great foundations to win the game in the first half, tackling bucket loads of energy out of Leeds. However, at half time, they employed the three little piggies to build the house. And despite plenty of huff and puff, they put in an ultimately disappointing performance. Leeds played a patient and composed game and deserved the win. Hull really missed Connor in attack and Fenua at centre is a defensive liability. This, this, that, that, that centre combination of, of Fenua up against, um, Conrad Hurrell was just like who's going to mess it up more <laughs> who's going to drop it more and who's going to miss the more tackles I, I mean Hurrell, Hurrell missed the tackle for wait, Hull's second try mm. or the first try he, he came flying out didn't he and and, uh, and let him in, in the corner but then Fanu was doing the same just totally lost yeah, at sea yeah. for the Dwyer try weren't it so yeah Okay, David Lum at Lum D on Twitter. Really frustrating, but somewhat inevitable outcome. That pointless All Star game that looks even more pointless now it has cost Hull big time. With Connor fit, Hull would have wrapped it wrapped this up by half time. Leeds managed to stay in it long enough. Reynolds try second half post COVID was a dick again at the end, and like Savellier is going to unnecessarily deplete us even further the bench is already far too weak yeah Reynolds is uh, his nickname's the grub and that's because he's a knobhead not it's not he is a grub yeah. he is a grub <laughs> yeah <laughs> he he's gonna get a ban because it was pretty clear the headbutt thing was maybe not a headbutt just walking up to him squaring up you could argue I don't know but it's pretty clear that he threw a punch at Myler for, for no real reason other than Myler trying to stop a fight between Dwyer and Reynolds and he didn't want I've, to I've not no stop idea, a fight I've, I've no idea why Myler got simbined um, although Sky did show a replay <laughs> was showing a replay during the uh, during the fight weren't they so we didn't really see it well um, the comparison event would be we didn't talk about this actually did we in the Wigan game when Mamo who I thought was all over the place in the, in that game and was borderline like gonna do something stupid at some point and he did and he got the Simbin in but Partington got Simbin in Simbin as well he didn't actually do much Partington other than run in from a distance into the melee and he got Simbin for that so clearly there's been a a conversation gone out there about this running in has to stop because that's what escalates things um, and the explanation that uh he was the ref. Um, Moore gave was that Myler had run in. Now, yeah, he had come he in from he, a he distance. Wasn't, was it wasn't breaking it up, weren't it? It wasn't in the same way that Partington came in with kind of half an intent to get involved in something. He was definitely going in to calm the situation down. And um, so I, I think the, the refs maybe were following up on something that they're trying to put into place, which is not necessarily a, a negative thing, but maybe misjudge the situation with with the Myler side of things. Dwyer probably deserved the Simbin in for basically over-celebrating in, in Reynolds' face. That's what caused the, the spark-up, that and Reynolds being a knobhead. But... Well, yeah. I mean, you know my view on Leeds. You know, I think they all deserved at least the Simbin in, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I think that's twice I've defended Dwyer on this... Um, you know, he's got an elbow to the head for, for no reason. And, and 
I, I, I do get when that when you're simbing one from each side to calm it down. But the, you know when there's clearly one player that started the fight, then then it's yeah. almost like there's there's you know. Do you think it could if it was the away players. player who started the fight? Only the away player would have got Simbind, but with a home crowd who already hate Liam Moore anyway because he had one bad game there three years ago and they've just determined that he hates them. Um, you know, because we do that, don't we, as fan bases? We do that all the time, all fan bases do. Um, but do you think that was part of his mentality around Simbin in the, the, the Leeds player as well? Do you think that was a, a influenced him at all? I, don't know. I mean, I mean to be fair, subconsciously or unconsciously, or what have you? Yeah, I mean, the, the the game was over. I mean, that was the try that killed it. There was only yeah. I don't think he got back on. Did I don't think either player got back on. Did they? Um, For like twenty seconds, just to sort of yeah, shake yeah. each other's hands and make up. I think. I just think I I, do, I just think that 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 at the moment the referees are weak and uh, you know rather than rather than take the decision that that is correct, i.e. the grub started a fight because he's pissed off because Leeds have scored a try and and sin and sin bit him. Or, or either that or give one red, one yellow. If if you really yeah. think that that why they deserved it, they they take the easy option, so they can't be criticised by either cl- by the fans of either club, and they just you know calm it down by sending two players off. You're right. It was the same Mamo and uh, and and Partington, although. I think Partington's starting to get reputation, isn't it? Um, so oh, that's totally, possibly why yeah. got... No, and, I, and I'm saying it's not the same. I, Partington ran yeah. in with sort of a an intent, at least, to get involved, whereas Myler's intent was to de-escalate, not, not be part of the melee. <laughs> um, it's almost like now you can throw a punch as as and you know that they're going to hit your back. So, yes, you, you, you're chanting a ban, but... In terms of that game, you know, it's just going to be 12 against 12. Well, I'm still not convinced that um, Jones hit Savelio back. But, so, last oh, week, yeah, that one. Before, yeah, so, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, Dr. Bob well, Phillips I said... Had, I, I think they had to go in a tunnel, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Dr. Bob Phillips said, was it the clash of the codes where one half play, was played Union and the other league? This game showed while Hull might have edged it in the duller half... The Rhinos are back and therefore will soon be crowned champions again, Dr. Bob says. Um, may, maybe, maybe, maybe Dr. Bob, but probably not. Um, but they were really good in the second half leads in this game. I mean, they, they, had a, they had more chances than Hull FC, didn't they? Hull, Hull had one sort of scrappy chance in the first half where Swift kind of fumbled it after close to the line when he was trying to offload it. And the try that they scored was not exactly Reynolds' pass last pass was forward for me on that try that they scored Hull did but so I, I don't think they were great in attack throughout the game Tomb of Harvey's brilliant late um, kind of after it was all over effort aside uh, whereas Leeds had quite a few chances didn't they the, the bomb there was the one where Reynolds put in that really good tackle on um, really good tackle on the young the younger Newman when Gale had put the kick through and Newman was about to catch the ball and Reynolds came down. He punched the ball, actually, and, and, and then forced Newman to not be able to collect it. So it probably should have been a knock-on against him. But it was a really great cover tackle that I thought from Reynolds. And there was the one where oh. Handley threw it inside and Lehman caught a ball that probably was for Gale, but really was for neither of them. It, it wasn't a great pass back inside. As well as the tries that they did score from... Uh, Myler's line for his try was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, it was a good try. I thought... I- I mean, I I thought that Hull dominated the first half. That they probably should have been, they should probably should have been more up. They had a chance to take two points when they were six four up, and they they didn't. Um, but when Hull was on Leeds' line, they just they just didn't seem. They didn't they didn't look like scoring. Um, I think between Hanley and Newman, I think they spilled two or three try scoring. Um, yeah. Opportunities and and at one stage it really looked it really looked bad for Leeds because it, it the body language looked wrong the arguments themselves, um, I think Cruz Lehman give I don't know if it was Hanley or Newman I think he give him a right bollocking for for um, for that pass that went that, that went knocked on and it looked like it looked like it might get away from Leeds but then they did they they had like a purple patch, um, 
And they look, they look, <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it, but they look really good coming forward in the second half. They defended well in the first half and they look good in the second half going forward. So, fair play to Leeds. But in terms of, uh, therefore, we'll soon be ch- crowned champions, I think Dr. Bob Phillips needs to uh, stay off the smack. <laughs> well, AK Steele summed it up, Hull's problem. Kind of like what we talked about with Wigan missing their star fullbacks. Connor makes such a difference to their attack and, um, and he's not there and... And it just, that's Jake Connor rather than Connor Wynn, who was there, obviously. Um, yeah. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work the same. You, you, you don't have enough X factor to unsettle the defensive line of the opposition, just like Wigan don't right now. You can predict the plays, you can call the plays as a defensive side, you can read them and you can cover them quite easily because there's not someone with exceptional skill who can do it all being like the last person to touch the ball on every play sort of thing. So that, yeah. that I that's, mean, yeah. F- FC have got a really good starting 13, even now, even without Connor, but the bench is, is weak, isn't it? And I think the bench was the difference last night for Leeds. Yeah. When you, when you start putting Connor, Taylor, and even scumbag Savelio into that sort of mix. And if he can stay on the, if, if, you know, two of the three of them can keep themselves on the pitch and keep themselves out of trouble and keep themselves from getting wound up by the opposition, They'll come good again, I think, is what I'm saying. After these two poor defeats, they'll come good again. Do you want to take us through the standings, Rob? Uh, yep, the standings. Top place, Catalan, improved to 93% after 11, the 11th win in the row. St. Helens are still on 83, with Wire closing the gap to 75. Wigan are fourth on 62.5, and Hull FC fifth on 67. 57, that should be lots of typo by me, sorry. Si- Sold up the river there. 60, 67. Oh, 57, yeah, yeah. you're right. Uh, after both teams lost their games. Hull KR are still on 54, having played just 11 games. Leeds are in seventh, just behind on 53. Castleford have 42, Salford 28, Huddersfield 26, Wakefield 25, and Lee are on the bottom yet to get off the mark. Stat line of the round, I'm going with Chris Satai in a losing effort. 13 mark tackles is good, 7 tackle bus is really good. 201 metres from a, a prop forward who did it all through how many tough carries he took rather than one one or two like 50 metre carries I know he had one break in there didn't he but Chris Satai uh, performed really well there from the from the two TV games I guess we have to go off do you have a player of the week from this week uh, I've got two Daryl Clark because he used to play for Cass and Jank Memo because he's going to play for Cass <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say Clark was everywhere um, for, for Wire and I think he was a, he was the one player that they had that felt like an attacking difference maker for them in, in the game so I'll agree with you on Daryl Clark there and what about highlight of the week what's the what was the best best moment you saw from any of the games I don't know I like a good fight there were, good, there were, there were a couple of punch ups weren't there <laughs> Um. I didn't enjoy Leeds winning, I will admit that. I did enjoy Wigan losing, so I will also enjoy that. So I think my highlight of the week was Wigan losing <laughs> and getting dicked by the ref for once because it makes a change. <laughs> well, I'm going to pull out something from that Wigan game and say Harry Smith had a bit of a rough patch recently, especially that home game against uh, Warrington. His, his goal kicking has been, although mostly from very far out wide, not as good as he wants it to be but that try he set up for um, Liam Marshall the second try of Wigan's second try I think um, great play by the young kid so I'm going to give him the highlight moment of of the week predictions from last week we'll do all the other Super Roo stuff when we've had the full week but um, predictions me and David both went two out of three because I against my better judgement went for Wigan to win and David against his went for FC to win so um So, yeah, that's it for those three matches. We're going to now make some predictions for, we think, five matches still at this point over the weekend. Predictions time then. It's round 17 of Super League over this upcoming weekend. We'll, of course, be catching up on all these games later next week. Um... I think I've still got Sarah's name in there on the thing. So you can make Sarah's predictions or you can make your own, Rob. You can put your name to them if you like. Um, Sunday, we've got two games. The first one's at 3 p.m. It is the local derby, Wigan versus Lee. Um, I'll, I'll let you go first on this one, Rob. 
Uh, I think Wigan are going to win by 24. 